Asata Shakira was born July 16, 1947. Her birth name is Joanne Deborah Bryan, and she was born in Jamaica, New York. Her family consists of her grandparents, Lulu Hill, Frank Hill, and an aunt slash future lawyer, Evelyn Williams, and her sister, Beverly Bryan. At the age of three, Joanne and her family moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. Growing up, her grandparents influenced her to speak up and not be afraid of white people. Following her grandparents' advice, she got older, joined groups such as Black Liberation Movement, Student Rights Movement, Movements to End War on Vietnam, and the Black Panther Party. She was falsely accused in six different criminal cases. All cases were acquitted due to lack of evidence. This political prosecution was a part and parcel of the government's policy of eliminating political opponents by charging them with crimes and arresting them with no regard to the federal basis of such charges. On May 2, 1973, involved in a shooting in which a police officer dies as well as one of her friends, according to Shakur, she was falsely accused of murder and sent to prison. She knew she was innocent and attempted to escape prison and succeeded and now lives in Cuba. Asata Shakir is now 67. Asata once said, Nobody in the world in history has ever gotten their freedom by appealing to the moral sense of the people who were oppressing them. Kathleen Cleaver was born May 13, 1945 in Dallas, Texas. Her parents were activists and educators who had their master's degrees and PhDs. Kathleen Cleaver later joined the Nonviolent Coordinating Committee because her friend Sammy Young was murdered by a white supremacist in Tuskegee. Later on, Kathleen Cleaver met Eldridge Cleaver and married soon after joining the Black Panther Party. After Eldridge was involved in a shootout with the police, he fled the country and Kathleen Cleaver reunited with her husband in Algeria. She eventually had two children, Masio Cleaver and Tojo Cleaver. Shortly after Kathleen and Eldridge returned to the U.S., they divorced, and she continued her education at Yale College. Kathleen Cleaver once said, in reference to feminism in the Black Panther Party, quote, The suggestions itself was never valued objectively. The fact that the suggestions came from a woman gave it lesser value. Elaine Brown was born in North Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on March 2, 1943. Brown attended Temple University and left for Los Angeles, California before the end of her first year of college. Brown began writing for a radical black Congress newspaper called The Hembury. She became familiar with the Black Panther Party from a legal debate about Huey Newton. She eventually became a member of the Los Angeles Black Panther Party chapter. In 1971, she became the editor of the Black Panther Party paper. Soon after she was elected, the first female member of the Black Panther Central Committee. In 1974, Huey Newton named Elaine Brown chairwoman of the Panther Party. In 1977, Brown left the party because of complaints of her female leadership. Brown later co-founded two organizations, Mother Advocating Juvenile Justice in 1997 and National Alliance for Radical Prison Reform in 2002. In A Taste of Power, a book written by Elaine Brown, she states, I had joined the majority of black women in America in denouncing feminism. The feminists were right. The value of my life had been obliterated as much by being female as by being black and poor. Racism and sexism in, in America were equal partners in my oppression. Regina Jennings was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As a runaway teenager, she knew she had a purpose to serve her black community nationwide. She was still a teenager when she bought her plane ticket to Oakland, California. When she arrived, she immediately went to the Black Panther headquarters where she inquired about membership. When the receptionist asked her why she wanted to join the party, she simply responded, I want to kill all the white people. That's why.
She was finally accepted into the party and began an education about her African roots that her fellow members provided her. It was surprising to her when her when the officer in charge of her Black Panther Party branch made advances at her. She was not interested, and the more she refused, the more the officer would treat her bad by giving her ridiculous tasks and suggesting she was out of order to fellow board members for not receiving his advances towards her. Regina knew what some men of the party were doing was wrong, but she believed more in the message on racism and to leave the party based on sexism. Regina once said, There were women like me who tried to hold on because we understood the power significance and the need for our organization.